Now that we've seen a table showing the relative strengths of various acids and bases, let's understand this idea of acid strengths in a little more detail. We can begin with the definitions of strong and weak acids. These terms, strong and weak, will be used much the same way that we used them when we talked about strong and weak electrolytes in other videos. Specifically, a strong acid, by definition, undergoes 100% ionization in water. However, a weak acid only partially ionizes in water. These figures show the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. In the figure on the left, we have hydrochloric acid dissolved in water. When hydrochloric acid dissolves in water, it forms hydronium ions and chloride ions. And you see in the beaker that all of the HCl has ionized or dissociated into hydronium ions and chloride ions. On the other hand, the beaker on the right shows a solution of hydrofluoric acid. In this situation, we still have some hydrogen fluoride molecules or hydrofluoric acid molecules combined together, although we also have some hydronium and fluoride ions separated from each other. Before we move on much further, it's probably a good time to remember what the strong acids are. In these videos, there will be six compounds that we'll need to memorize as being strong acids. Most of the other acids we'll be dealing with will not be strong acids, they'll be weak acids. The six strong acids you should memorize are hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. Again, other acids that we'll be using in these videos will be considered weak acids unless otherwise specified. Now that we've seen the differences in the visual representations of strong acids and weak acids, we should take a few moments to examine how strong acids and weak acids look differently in chemical equations. Specifically, we'll want to look at what's known as an ionization equation for acids. In ionization equations, the acid reacts with water in the liquid phase to form hydronium ions and the conjugate base, which is the anion from the acid. We can represent these with a general formula, HA for some acid reacting with water, which will be in equilibrium with the hydronium ion and the anion A minus. For a strong acid, which has complete ionization, we would use a one directional arrow to indicate that at equilibrium, we only have hydronium ions and anions present in solution. However, for a weak acid, we would use the equilibrium arrow to indicate that at equilibrium, we have both the undissociated acid, the hydronium ion, and the anion all present in solution. Since we use an equilibrium arrow for the weak acid ionization equation, we should be able to write an equilibrium constant expression for this same equation. We recall that for the equilibrium constant expression, we have the concentrations of the products over the concentrations of the reactants. For this example, where we have the weak acid hydrofluoric acid reacting with water to produce hydronium ions and fluoride ions, the equilibrium constant expression would be the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of the fluoride ions divided by the concentration of the hydrofluoric acid. You should recall that we leave the water out of the equilibrium constant expression because it's in the liquid phase. In previous equilibrium constant expressions, we had a subscript C for the capital letter K to indicate that we were using concentrations. In these situations, we're going to change the subscript for the equilibrium constant to a lowercase a and we would call this equilibrium constant the acid ionization constant or the acid dissociation constant. The table shown here shows the ionization equations and Ka values for a number of weak acids. You should notice that the values of the Ka's range from about 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 10. Since we know that as the equilibrium constant value increases, that indicates that we have more products present at equilibrium. If we have a large value for Ka, that means we have a much stronger acid. 
So for these weak acids, the stronger of the weak acids are those that have the larger values for Ka. You should also recall that in these equilibrium constants, the exponents are negative numbers, 10 to the negative 2 down to 10 to the minus 10. 10 to the minus 10 is a very, very small equilibrium constant, which means that almost none of the weak acid will actually ionize in solution. By now, you should be able to differentiate strong and weak acids based on their dissociation in water. You should be able to identify six strong acids. You should be able to write acid ionization equations as well as their corresponding acid ionization constant expressions. Finally, you should be able to compare strengths of acids based on their acid ionization constant values.